Well, good morning. It's a real privilege to be with you today. Thank you for receiving me here into Tyndale Bible Church for this day. I am Paul Scharf, a church ministries representative for the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry. And I'll be saying a little bit more about that just briefly here to introduce and update you about the Friends of Israel and about our ministry and say a little bit about my background. But again, I want to say thank you for this opportunity today to be with you uh, at a place that has had an influence on me through the years here at Tyndale. And I have been a recipient of your good ministry and uh, a distant participant by way of my association with Dr. Whitcomb, as uh, Pastor mentioned, who I'll say just a little bit more about, give a little testimony here. My wife is not with me today, Lynette. She's back up in Wisconsin. Um, but uh, I am uh, privileged to be on my sixth trip to Texas for ministries with the Friends of Israel. Uh, my second among those six where I've come to Dallas. And so uh, this has been a great opportunity. I'll say a little bit more about that, Lord willing, and uh, be glad to answer any questions that you have. But first, let me back up and just give a broader look here at the Friends of Israel for a moment. I know that you're all familiar with the Friends of Israel. And all of you who are associated with Tyndale have had a uh, um, relationship in ministry with Friends of Israel through the years. Uh, we're a worldwide ministry that's devoted to teaching the biblical truth about Israel and sharing the gospel of the Messiah that Israel physically, humanly speaking, gave to the world, our only Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want to share that message and uh, share the whole counsel of God in all its fullness with everyone that we can, both Jewish and Gentile. And we do that through a whole variety of means. We're a, a multifaceted ministry, as I think all of you know, and I'll just share some of those briefly this morning. Uh, you can find lots more. Probably any question you have, you'll find an answer from our ministry, from our long history at foi.org. And we invite you to check that often for updates and especially news about things that are going on in Israel and uh, also in Eastern Europe, in Ukraine. Uh, this is my third straight March now of coming to Texas on these trips. And the previous two years, the big news was Ukraine and the Jewish people in Ukraine and what was happening there. And of course, now uh, that's still an issue, but also we have obviously what's going on in Israel and really all around the world for the Jewish people. And we have people reaching out and helping in practical ways and giving that humanitarian aid to our Jewish friends, standing with our Jewish friends all over the world, including in Israel. Again, always with the ultimate purpose of bringing the gospel everywhere we go. I think all of you know about our Flagship resource, our award-winning global outreach magazine, Israel My Glory, which goes all around the world, and we want to make sure you get it if you don't currently receive it. You can sign up for a one-year free subscription on my table that I have out in the foyer. I encourage you to visit that before you leave today and sign up to receive that subscription, either a print or you can get it digital only if you want instead of the traditional printed version. Just make sure by your name to put the word digital on there and to receive it that way and to provide your email so you can get that. We have a weekly national radio program that some of you may hear. It's with my boss, uh, Chris Katulka, as the teacher and host. And um, it's a fast-moving program that also includes news from Israel. Like every edition of the magazine, it also ends with the life of Zvi, Zvi Kalisher, served the Lord with Friends of Israel for more than 50 years, lived an amazing life as a Holocaust survivor and Israeli war veteran. And uh, we praise the Lord for the life of Zvi. And there in the uh, recent episode, you can see part of Zvi's legacy, actually his granddaughter, Yael Kalisher, who's now serving with the Friends of Israel. And she's on the program there talking about uh, current issues surrounding what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. Well, 
for those who aren't aware, the Friends of Israel has a long and storied history going back to December 1st of 1938. It's my privilege to stand this summer in Philadelphia on our encounter tour, the place where we had our first offices and uh, received our first check on December 1st, 1938. And that was three weeks after things began to happen in Germany in terms of the events of Kristallnacht, November 9 and 10, the official launch of the Holocaust. It was my privilege to write a blog for the Friends of Israel this past fall for the 85th anniversary of Kristallnacht and the launch of the Friends of Israel in response to that. So you can read that if you're interested. I encourage you, if you're not aware of some of these very important historical details, to uh, check that. I try to give an overview of Kristallnacht and, of course, a tribute to the founding then at that time of the Friends of Israel. By the way, I believe there will be some time later on for questions. Uh, if you have any uh, you can save them for then, and you can certainly also ask me personally anything that uh, I can answer uh, about the Friends of Israel or certainly about our ministry within the Friends of Israel. And let me just share uh, a few things about that before we get into our lesson for today. And a transition point for us here uh, is an event that I'll be participating in, and that's next month in Michigan. And uh, that might be too far for you to commute to come to this one. But uh, this is a conference that we have editions of this theme all across the country in the spring and the fall of the year. It's called Prophecy Up Close. And our theme this year, obviously chosen in light of current events, is called Israel's Resilience, the Struggle to Survive. And it'll be my privilege to uh, be with Tim Munger in Michigan in April talking about these things. But we have a number of others uh, perhaps some who are watching by way of video will uh, be able to go to the website and find a conference in their location. And the other thing is we would love to uh, bring this to more locations in the future, perhaps not in 2024, but in a future year. We'd certainly like to come to this area uh, in Texas uh, and other places where people may be watching. So if you have a uh, church or other facility that you're associated with that, uh, or, or an organization that you're part of that you believe could accommodate a group of perhaps 200 people for a Saturday prophecy conference. Uh, we'd love to hear from you about that and we would love to expand the reach of the Prophecy Up Close ministry. And unfortunately these are not normally available to watch online. It's intended to be an in-person event. But um, Please stay tuned for any that may be coming near you. All right, and talking then a little bit more about my own ministry within the Friends of Israel, I've finished five years now of uh, this position of church ministries representative in the Midwest. How many think Texas is part of the Midwest? Anyone? Usually that doesn't go over too well when you say that. We did have one hand here, so, but uh, uh, we're expanding the definition of the Midwest. Uh, I've preached in 15 states on behalf of the Friends of Israel now. And as I said, uh, sort of a, a sideline that I've been given to do here in my work is to come into the state of Texas, which uh, has been a real blessed uh, challenge over these past years, beginning in the fall of uh, 2021, November. I've come every November and March now since then. This is my sixth ministry trip. And uh, it was uh, given to me as a real opportunity and uh, kind of a test, I guess you might say, um, because the Friends of Israel told me to come to Texas. They didn't tell me how to do it or where to go. I just, that was part of the test, you see, to make, make my way here. And uh, churches like you have received me. I've been in quite a number of churches here and other opportunities so, that, that have come about because of the, these travels and uh, really appreciate those opportunities. And um, it's, just, it's, it's been a real blessing to be here. Uh, Texas is really our state of probably our most supporters in the country. And there's reasons for that that, uh, that many of you are aware of. There's a lot of people here that support our Israel and our theology of understanding about Israel and appreciate that. And yet we don't have a church ministries representative here in Texas. 
And so that what you see was part of the rationale for it. And uh, it's been, as I said, it's just been a joy. Uh, this is my second time in the Dallas area. I hope to do more and more uh, in Texas and here in Dallas, coming here in the future. So this is my longest trip of any kind that I've ever undertaken that I'm in right now. I'm officially in um, the second half of the trip now. Uh, it stretches from March 1 to 18 that I'll be gone. Uh, from leaving home to getting back home. I've never done it that long before, uh, but it's gone very quickly so far because every day has really been filled. Uh, this past week was, as mentioned, the Chafer Seminary Conference, and uh, I don't think anyone else here was there for that, at least in person. It was a tremendous time that just uh, wove right into the things we're going to be talking about in the message today. Israel, past, present, and future. If you're interested, I have an article about that that you can read, and I'll come back to that in a second. But it was just a, such a tremendous time of uh, thinking about things that are happening right now and their significance biblically uh, with teachers like Dr. Randall Price, uh, who I know that you know, and uh, Donald, Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum and uh, Mitch Glazer, and others, and uh, what a tremendous time to connect with the people that were there and fellowship, as well as hearing such rich biblical and prophetic teaching. Uh, as I said, I have an article about the conference. Uh, this is something I actually write on a weekly basis, my column, uh, and I from time to time report on events like this week, but I uh, write that column each week and distribute it through uh, several means that I'd like to see expand. And so you could pray about that and check uh, my work there if you'd like to know more. It runs on Fridays on sharperiron.org. And then uh, my columns are also picked up at raptureready.com. Some of you may know that website. And as of just a few weeks ago, this has been a real blessed connection that the Lord has brought, is prophecytracker.org. And so you can find them at those places. Um, the Lord has also given me many other wonderful opportunities, um, such as uh, with Dr. Jimmy DeYoung Jr., to be a partner with him on his radio ministry. He interviews me from time to time and uh, also runs my sermons there at prophecytoday.com. That's been a, just a real blessing whenever I'm on with Jimmy uh, People tell me about it, and I, I really enjoy that opportunity. One that's flown, of course, Jimmy's in Texas, but this uh, this is sort of didn't come about because of my trips to Texas, but one that has. I don't think you hear the KHCB network here in Dallas, do you? I don't think so. But they have about over 40 stations in English, many more in Spanish, but just in the English um, my very first time I ever spoke on Texas ground was at Sugar Lane Bible Church for a men's breakfast back in November of 21. And one of the first people that talked to me after I gave the message was Bruce Munsterman, the president of KHCB, he asked me to come and be on the radio with interviews. And so now every time I come, all six trips, I've gone and done interviews at KHCB. That's been just an incredible blessing that I never even thought about or anticipated. Um, and that's led to other opportunities uh, at KHCB to be on with holiday radio spots and things um, that are just a wonderful uh, sort of add-ons to the ministry or enhancements that the Lord has brought about. Uh, I'm also, I have opportunities to be on the radio here in Dallas because of coming here as a guest on a program. And um, these are just a wonderful blessings from the Lord and things that have flowed out of this time of coming here to Texas. So lots more I could say about all this, obviously, uh, and about all the things we're involved in. These are just a few highlights and, and things related to my time here in your state. You can find all of my materials and all of my resources. You can always connect with me on my webpage for our ministry within the Friends of Israel on sermonaudio.com, sermonaudio.com slash P-S-C-H-A-R-F, uh, P-Sharf. 
and uh, invite you to always find me there and you can send me a message if you're uh, looking for something that you can't find. Through my relationship with Sermon Audio, uh, which began with Dr. Whitcomb more than 20 years ago, I'll come back to him in a moment, uh, but I now have the privilege to have my own page there. Um, I get involved with Sermon Audio a little bit. I'm privileged to speak uh, from time to time for their daily global prayer meeting, which is held online at 11 o'clock our time, Monday through Friday, and I'll be the devotional speaker for that coming up just after I get home from this trip here in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> and Sermon Audio also provides an app. If you really want to stay on top of our ministry, you can uh, plug that into your phone and you'll always have our latest content there in that way. I talked to Pastor about giving a little testimony here about Dr. Whitcomb, who's uh, already been mentioned here a couple of times. And uh, I know that uh, he has been with you in the past. He's, of course, now with the Lord. Um, you have a plaque commemorating his times among you upstairs. I went and looked and took a picture of that yesterday. And uh, it's a little bit surreal sometimes, especially when I go to a place that uh, I used to write about and promote Dr. Whitcomb going to, and I, I wasn't necessarily here with him. In fact, I didn't come here with him, but uh, I was you know, back home imagining his time at a place like this when it was happening. <clears throat> and now to be here, as it were, in his place or without him, uh, certainly wish he were here with us today. But uh, Dr. Whitcomb was my friend. He was my mentor. It was 30 years ago this coming summer that my wife and I made a life-changing decision when she said at lunch one day that we could leave and go to seminary. And uh, she's wondered about that ever since, you know, and how she said that. But um, Dr. Whitcomb was one of the main reasons that drew me to attend the seminary that I did, which was Faith Baptist Theological Seminary in Ankeny, Iowa. He was going to begin teaching modules there that fall. And uh, after we went and visited the school, and uh, he wasn't there for that, of course, but uh, thinking about the class he was going to be teaching in September, I knew there was nowhere else I w wanted to be but right there. I didn't know that much about Dr. Whitcomb then, but I knew th that much. And I wasn't disappointed. Um, ended up studying under Dr. Whitcomb for 10 classes in seminary. And then, in, in un, totally unexpected means, back in 2003, uh, began assisting him in his ministry, my wife and I both, which continues to the present hour. It's a real small part of what we do now. But I still have that connection. Of course, I can't communicate with him directly because he's not here for that. He's with the Lord. But we continue to uphold his legacy. And uh, I would just like to insert any time that I can the opportunity to honor and remember Dr. Whitcomb and his impact on my life. And of course, for those who don't know, Dr. Whitcomb was a great Old Testament scholar and theologian the co-author of the book, The Genesis Flood, with Dr. Henry Morris. Back in 1961, Ken Ham and many others have credited that book as launching the modern creation movement, unleashing the tsunami that attacked at the foundation of the sandcastle of evolution. And great has been its fall. And uh, really altered the face of evangelical Christianity in America and throughout the world. Uh, on this issue of biblical creationism. And so Dr. Whitcomb, of course, that wasn't the only subject that he was even famous for, but it was uh, one where he had such tremendous impact, and he was just such a great uh, scholar and teacher, and you all know he loved people, and people loved him wherever he went. When he went to be with the Lord, Hard to believe it's now four years ago, just before this time in the year. Uh, Dr. David Jeremiah offered this testimony, saying that intellectually Dr. Whitcomb was in a realm that was high up in the sky, far above everybody else except for a few brilliant scholars. But he also had the gift of teaching because when he preached, he was able to take these lofty, complex truths, bring them down to earth, 
and make them clear, understandable, and applicable and exciting to everyone. So we praise the Lord for memory of Dr. Whitcomb. I said I'm still uh, you know, working in some sense to keep his teaching going. Uh, still help to manage his page at sermonaudio.com, sermonaudio.com slash Whitcomb, where we've passed over a million sermon downloads now. And we also keep his weekly half-hour radio program alive. It's on about 70-some stations around the country. And uh, I have a part in helping with that. And one of my interests through the years was not only to help Dr. Whitcomb in his ministry, but to write and compile his biography. And I, I did that in a couple of different ways. That was actually what drew us to visit the Whitcombs back in 2003 at that time. I wrote his life story up in a magazine article. Um, he had colon cancer at that time. We didn't know how long he was going to be here. And that was what drove all of that. And out of that came the opportunity to assist him in the ministry. But uh, that's kind of come full circle now again as I'm working with uh, his son David. Uh, how many of you have seen this volume that's come out in the last couple of years from Master Books? Um, a Good and Faithful Servant, The Life of Dr. Whitcomb by his son David, who's a medical doctor and scientist. Uh, this is out... Uh, for a while now, but uh, volume two is going to be coming, Lord willing, and I'm helping uh, David on volume two, which is sort of the modern history of Dr. Whitcomb's impact. We were I was talking with David a few days ago before I left for Texas, and we talked about the fact, really, Dr. Whitcomb's greatest decade of ministry, even though he had done so many things before this, but his, his greatest time of influence really came in his 80s. And uh, that is the time that especially, well, I knew him through all of that time and um, helped him and was able to be part of that. And so we're going to be writing about that and bringing that up uh, through the end of the story. Uh, Lord willing, in volume two uh, of the biography through Master Books. All right, again, if you have questions, I'd love to hear from you later on or talk with you. Uh, personally about any of those things, but let me just wrap all of this up and say the biggest way that you can help us in our ministry, well, I'll save that one for a second. The biggest way you can stay involved in our ministry is to get our email newsletter. And if you sign up on the table for a free subscription to Israel My Glory, you'll receive... Uh, not only the magazine, but if you provide your email and check the consent box, you'll receive Friends of Israel's emails also, yes, but you'll receive our email. And we would love to have you do that. We have over a thousand people now on our email list, and we would love to add you and to have your involvement and your interest in our ministry. So please uh, sign up if you would and receive those those that contact in that way, we'd, we'd be glad to add you. We have an uh, expert volunteer who helps us, and we produce a high-quality, I believe, uh, email that we try not to bombard you or overwhelm you with. We'd love to have you stay in touch. Now, the biggest way that you can help us is, you hopefully know what I'm going to say, pray for us. I showed you the front of our prayer card at the beginning. Uh, and here's the back of that prayer card. I think it's a distinctive of Tyndale Church and Seminary that you all know this. The, what, the, what I'm going to say here is the prayer card. Where does it go? The distinctive is it goes on your refrigerator door. There you go. So place our prayer card or one of our other cards at your refrigerator door where you, hopefully you have good thoughts when you come to the door and you'll see our picture and you'll pray for us. We are in a support raising ministry, something I didn't think I could ever do. And so we need the Lord's help and uh, we need your involvement and we invite you to pray for us and to stay in touch with us in our ministry for the Friends of Israel. And I trust this little talk about Dr. Whitcomb has been uh, encouraging to you and an honor to his legacy as well. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead into our topic for this morning, which is 
Signs intensifying what's ahead for Israel. And this will be our topic for the last bit of this hour and then all of the next hour. We're not going to try to rush ahead. Uh, we'll just go as far as we can because this is sort of a lengthy PowerPoint. Um, but we'll see how all that works out and try to go for quality, not uh, speed. And, uh, and we'll end with a time of questions at the end. And we'll see how the Lord will use all of this, I hope, to encourage each of us in knowing how to live in times like these. Um, we are at an amazing point in history that was reinforced to me this past week listening to Dr. Randall Price and others, as I mentioned, at the Chafer Conference. Such incredible things happening before us. And we're privileged and, and we're also responsible as living in this day as stewards who will give an account of the opportunity and the time that we've had at this pivotal moment in history that we're witnessing. By the way, I have also, in case we don't get through all of these things or in case you miss something, I have an article that sums up this whole study at sharperiron.org and it lists all the verse references and all the major points and I invite you to check that as well. We do want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we know that the Lord wants us to pray about how we can be effective in our own lives, <coughs> excuse me, at such a time as well, not only to pray, but to pray for wisdom. You know, I think if, if we can understand and grasp how the things that we're seeing in our world today relate and fit with what the Bible tells us will happen out in the prophetic future, that can help us to interpret what we're seeing before us in our lives in, in, on the world scene right now, and then we can have hope to know that God is at work moving the world toward the end that he has ordained. Uh, we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in discouragement or just hope for the good old days. Uh, but we can pray for wisdom. God, help me to understand and and see your hand in all of this, and help me to be the most effective person I can be for you at this incredibly important time in which you've placed me and given me this opportunity and this responsibility to serve you here in this day. You remember Jesus talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees in Matthew chapter 16, and he called them hypocrites. He said, because they knew how to discern the face of the sky. They had a, a little proverb that we still have today. They said it differently than we do. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. It says, red at night, sailor's delight. Talking about the sky, right? Red in the morning, sailor's warning. Same thing they were talking about back in their time. But Jesus said, you're hypocrites. Because you think you know how to predict the weather, but you cannot discern the signs of the times, what's really important. Now, by the way, Jesus' first coming was not imminent like the rapture. It was predicted by the prophet Daniel, uh, mathematically predicted from the time that the decree went out for Nehemiah from Artaxerxes, go and rebuild the city of Jerusalem. The prophetic clock began to tick. The time of Messiah's coming was determined. Luke 3.15 tells us that all the world was in an expectation at that time. Galatians 4.4 4 and 5, it was at that precise moment that God had foreordained that the Messiah came into the world. The, the national leaders of Israel should have been there, ready and prepared to lead the nation into acceptance and belief in their own Messiah. Instead, they led the nation into what? Rejection of the Messiah. Jesus said, you're hypocrites. You need to be able to discern the signs of the times and live accordingly and understand biblically and prophetically what's happening and the significance of the time in which God has placed you so that you can serve him and, of course, receive the one that he has sent, the very Christ of God. Of course, they failed in this, but God help us to have wisdom 
as to how we are going to live and serve the Lord in these days of opportunity that he's given us. We'll give an account to him for how we've lived at this time, in such a time as this. Well, speaking of time, I know that you all have changed your clocks because you're all here this morning. And you're all also aware that our first hour is already gone. So with that, we're going to pause here and uh, just ask the Lord to help us as we go into the second hour of uh, being together this morning in his house. And we'll take the full hour or the full time that I have in the next hour to think further about this message of how signs are intensifying and what's ahead for Israel. And Lord, I pray that you will bless us now as we uh, continue this morning in fellowship and in worship of you and in study of your word. We thank you for this opportunity to be with everyone here today and ask your uh, blessing on this place, Lord, at Tyndale Bible Church, and the seminary here, and all the ministries that flow from this place. Thank you, Lord, for the ministry of the Friends of Israel and how the two have worked together through the years. And we pray that you will continue to bless and help us to serve you in the time that you give us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.